Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Inane Dragon, and tonight we return to the multi-part miniseries designed to fill space when I just can't be asked to do something better, answering intelligent design. If you haven't seen parts one through three, you'll find a link to the playlist in the description, and I'd recommend you check them out first, as the questions tend to build on one another. For those who have forgotten, this series is looking at answering a set of questions drafted by William Dembski as challenges for religious students to pose their biology teachers. And I'm no biology teacher, so if I can answer them, you can only imagine what a waste of time these are for the classroom. Question 7. In trying to understand biological systems, molecular biologists often need to reverse engineer them. Is this evidence that the systems were engineered to begin with? No. Metaphor is not evidence for design. Seriously, even you know it's a metaphor since you put the phrase reverse engineer in quotation marks. Do not be disingenuous. When you understand how evolutionary processes work, it becomes eminently clear that a living organism well adapted to its environment will be made of components that work well in its environment. That is the whole point. The creature adapts to the environment rather than being designed for a function. As a result, they seem like they're designed, and can be treated as such by biologists as a heuristic to make their job easier. Evolution works so well at producing efficient solutions that we've been able to apply evolutionary models to software and develop better programs than could be written by a thinking software programmer. That's right, blind algorithms can outperform intentional design. If that doesn't shoot a hole in intelligent design claims, you weren't listening. Question 8. Do intelligent design theory and neo-Darwinian theory make different predictions? Take, for instance, junk DNA. For which of these two theories would the idea that large stretches of DNA are junk be more plausible? No, they don't make different predictions because intelligent design makes no testable predictions. This is one of the reasons intelligent design isn't considered scientific. In its own attempts to support this question, the pamphlet these questions are found in argues that intelligent design can accommodate such historical contingencies because it recognizes the operation of natural processes at odds with design. That's not a prediction. What is the natural process at odds with design in this case? How does it work? Why didn't the designer incorporate features that perform routine DNA maintenance to remove the junk DNA as it builds up? In contrast, the modern understanding of genetics through evolution demonstrates how as an organism changes and stops using certain features, there's no longer selection pressure against mutation of the genes that produce those features. Whale ancestors, for example, having returned to the sea and no longer using their hind legs, have no selection pressure against genes that change the development of lower leg bones. Over time, those genes might get so scrambled that they don't even activate during embryological development of the fetus. At this point, they'd be what we call junk DNA. Interestingly, under the evolutionary model, such junk DNA would be advantageous to the whale's survival since no resources are wasted developing the vestigial hind legs. Once again, intelligent analysis of this question leads to an argument against intelligent design and for evolutionary theory. Whoops. At this rate, Dembski is zero for eight, with only two questions left. Will he finally knock it out of the park in the finale? Or will a time-tested theory supported by every piece of evidence found to date withstand his attempts to smoke God into your child's science class? Find out in the finale of Answering Intelligent Design, coming out whenever I get around to it. Until then, I'm an Dragon, and if you'd like to see more Inanity, make sure you subscribe down below. There will be some kind of celebration when I hit 2,718 subscribers, so if surprises are your cup of tea, take a moment to share this video around too. Thank you all, and have a good night. <laughs>